Well, welcome back, everyone. Well, I really can't think of a better way to wind up the year, especially when you want to talk about events that have happened in the political arena and community events and things like that, than to sit down with my good friend, Mark Westcott. So welcome, Mark. Thank you, nice Jesse. to have you here. It's always uh, good to be here. Mark is a retiring supervisor from uh, Warren County, and I think you and I met, oh my God, I'm trying to do the math. It's got to be about six years ago. You were involved in Chris Gibson's campaign, and I had that thirst for knowledge about what was going on in the county, and everybody kept saying, if you really want to hear the truth, talk to Mark. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, Jesse. So that was you. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, and I found out over the, uh, really, over the years, Mark, it's really been the case. Anytime I'm confused about something or want to learn more information about it, uh, just like the voters, always been able to rely on you to get the information. Thank you. So is your beard smoking yet from all this compliments? <laughs> or I don't know what's Well, I get some questions on it, but I'll just say my wife really likes it. <laughs> the, um, you're wrapping up uh, four years. Uh, you, tell me, if you, as you look back, give me some of the things that uh, you were involved with that you really thought you had an impact made a difference? Well, I think the first uh, area was just trying to open things up and challenge decisions. We did that on the airport. You know, mm. why are we expanding the runway? Uh, we held night meetings. We questioned things. And I think the lion's share of uh, voters agree with us that it's not necessary. Uh, then came along the nursing home sale, which we supported. There was a document called a request for a proposal, an mm -hmm. RFP. Yeah. That's written. Uh, it lays out the you know, what you're looking for in the sale, the objectives. And unfortunately, we tracked it all along the way, tried to make people aware that we didn't accomplish one of the objectives with the sale that we set out to achieve at the start. So we called that into question. We tried to make people aware of that. And I'd say most recently the Siemens contracts with the Cogen and the Geothermal. You know, we're now in the process of challenging those contracts and seeing what we can do about it to save taxpayers money. You know, uh Mark sends out a very comprehensive newsletter. You spend a lot of time on those newsletters. Uh, I know you've got a pretty good database of people that follow it. Um, I'm kind of curious about, it almost seems like it may be the last thing that you will be involved with, which is the one person, one vote uh, initiative that you're trying to get uh, put into place in Warren County. Talk a bit about that. Well, the way this originated is, uh, we were taking a hard look at the Board of Supervisors and trying to determine, you know, what's broken about it. We, we continuously make bad decisions. Uh, it started in the 1990s with a trash plant that cost tens of millions of dollars. Betty Little spoke out against it. Mm -hmm. uh, we go to the Siemens Cogen. Uh, there were local engineers speaking out against it, yet we went forward with it. We continue to have it. We're now in the process of trying to sort it out after millions and millions of dollars were lost. And, you know, most recently the court expansion, $16 million for a court expansion. And those of us that oppose these things said, is there a way to do it better? And what, it, what this process led us to was we think that the Board of Supervisors is actually unconstitutional. It's in violation of the 14th Amendment, one person, one vote principle. Uh, yeah, no, you're in favor of one person, one vote principle. We are. We think where it's a weighted uh, voting system now, right? That's correct. Which leads to what a lot of people have said to me, consider backdoor secret agreements. Uh, you know, I'm not suggesting anything is, is illegal, but what I am suggesting is that when there's a weighted vote, you go to those key people that are carrying the cloud and you kind of maneuver it instead of one person, one vote. Well, I just want to be clear. I mean, uh, what we're for is the one person, one vote principle and moving to a legislature would fulfill that. Right. Uh, we'd have legislative districts that are equally balanced. How that would happen is yet to be determined. There could take a lot of different forms. Uh, but we're advocating for it because we don't think that people are fairly represented as the current system exists. Mm -hmm. Got it. So you're going to leave on a high note? I feel like uh, I am <laughs> leaving on a high note. You know, we, I feel a lot of uh, vindication for the uh, efforts that we employed over the past four years. We're taking a hard look at the geothermal right now with Siemens. Um, I think there isn't anybody that's not convinced that there is a problem there and we need to get that resolved for the taxpayers. Mm -hmm. um, you're covering the meetings is a, is a big important step of, you know, ensuring there's transparency. What you do on video is, you know, different than what can be captured in meeting notes, for example. That's so right. 
now people can see what takes place up there. Our meetings are now being videotaped. Uh, I think these are real improvements so that people can keep a better eye on what their government's doing. You know, I, uh, I asked Mark before we went on, I said, you know, you've always been sort of this political gadfly in a way. You, Doug Beatty, and now it's Rachel Seabird. Uh, you know, uh, McDevitt gets involved in these things. You know, you've got, uh, once you get the momentum going to really work democracy the way I know you know, you, you feel it, it, the results are there. You know, you may win sometimes, you may lose sometimes. But you know what Mark said to me before he said, you know, regardless, you learn from every experience. And, you know, the learning process, of course, gives you the foundation for the next time you go through anything. Oh, it does. And, you know, you mentioned those three supervisors. You know, when I first went on the board, you'd, I'd lose a vo vote 19 to 1, and I'd be outspoken. And, mm -hmm. and now you've got a, what I call the vocal minority on the board. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are now challenging things and questioning decisions, and I think that's a really healthy uh, process. All right. 2016, around the corner. What are you going to do? Oh, I've got a lot of things planned for next year. <laughs> I'm, I'm really shocked. excited about <laughs> next year. And it's one of the reasons why I'm moving on from the board is it's all positive. Um, I'm moving on because I want to continue to help great candidates like Chris Gibson and Elise mm -hmm. Stefanik, and I will be. Uh, I've got plans down the road that you'll be hearing about. Um, I'm helping my party. I want to see Republicans run professional campaigns. I'm continuing to put on campaign academies. I've got two uh, planned in Congressman Katko's district uh, on the mid middle part of the state. Uh, and I'm going to start teaching. I've always mm -hmm. had a passion for working with younger people, and I'm going to start teaching two business classes at SUNY Adirondack. Well, you know what? I know you're not going to go too far, which I'm grateful for because, as I said, you've always been a great source of information, or when I call, as I've called them many times, I said, what's the real story behind this, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and you get it. Trust me, you get it. Uh, so the best of luck to you, Mark. Thank you. Uh, like I said, I can't think of a better way to wind up the year and talking about the issues and to get your wrap up. Jesse, so, <laughs> happy holidays, and yeah, same, same to, to you, everybody Mark. out there. Good. Thank you. To see this interview again, you can head to our website, looktvonline.com.